you all. So we're going to continue with session nine, Gaussian processes. And now we're going to talk about some particular example of um, uh, the mixture between Gaussian processing, Gaussian processes and Gaussian linear models. So remember about the classification or regression problem in which um, we, are, we were trying to infer some y given x, right? And we have some uh, function normally the the sigmoid over here but it can be any activation function um, where we are using the labels um, to do some uh, particular uh, prediction in this case plus and minus and uh, some f function here to to work through the the different um, uh, to process the different axes, okay? And when we are using a sigma, we call this a logistic regression. When we're using the private function, this is a private regression. And when we're using this f function, we can add it to our toolbox as a, a Gaussian process regression, basically. And the the whole idea of in here is to use this uh, posterior over here and try to to optimize it to, to infer our, our classification problem. So, uh, if we do as we do um, normally, we want to take the, the log of these, and this becomes, let's, let's call it likelihood, right? Like the likelihood of f. And this becomes the logarithm of py uh, given f plus the logarithm of pf given x. And this is, let me just leave these uh, in an implicit way because it will depend on my my final shape or, or what I'm I assuming that this py over here is and Remember like this pf given x is a normal since we are assuming that this is a Gaussian process So we are going to use the normal using set of mean to simplify the things uh, my covariance is going to be k and This then will be minus one half of f transpose k inverse F. So if I will have a mean, it would be the difference over here, right? Minus one half of the log of the determinant of k minus n half the log of two pi, right? Um, and again, this is my data feed. This is the complexity, and this is just a constant. And what I'm trying to do, as we did before, is just to try to optimize this with respect of f and see what happens because this is my gradient right and so normally we want to maximize these so in this case let's try to minimize it so i will need to to minimize the negative value of that right so my gradient is going to be then the minus uh, minus gradient of uh, logarithm of my py given f again this will depend on the shape so i'm going to just leave it in a implicit form plus the derivative of this with respect of f that is going to be just this term over here. So it is going to be twice this. Uh, and since I have uh, the half there, it cancels. And I'm going to do the same thing to compute my second derivative. So I want to compute the Hessian of this. And this is going to be um, my Hessian. And again, this is simply the second derivative of this py given f, I'm going to leave it explicit, plus my k inverse over here, right? So I'm just going, going to call this w for later on because we're going to use it. So um, what I'm gonna do now is we can use uh, iteratively weighted uh, linear, uh, sorry, least squares, IRLS. And if you remember these, uh, way of computing my gradient, it was uh, to gradient descent such that my next step is uh, moving through the Haitian and the gradient, right? And this is going to give me, if I plug this over here, then uh, ft minus uh, this thing over here times this. So w plus k inverse and then uh, times that thing over there minus the gradient of log of uh, p 
PYF plus key inverse F, right? And um, I can um, try to um, simplify this further. So now what I'm what I want to do over here is to try to try to factor this um, W plus, plus K in here. So if I push the, oh, sorry, this, this should be inverse, right? So if I, cause, cause this is like an inverse you If you want to think of these as a normal, uh, not in the, in the matrix form, but like an scalar, this is dividing this, right? So I can multiply it by, by that value and then uh, do the division by both of them, right? So I can just kind of factor it. So what I would do is like, I'm going to do the W plus K inverse over here. And then I'm going to multiply this FT times the non-inverted part of these. So this will give me the WFT plus K inverse uh, FT. Uh, minus plus that would be sorry minus minus that would be plus log p y given f and then I will have this uh, minus k inverse f right so I can cancel these and cancel these and I will have that that thing over here is um, w plus k inverse times wft plus the gradient of the log of p y given f. Okay, so <clears throat> this is equivalent to say that my p of f given x y, my posterior right is approximately a normal with uh, some uh, f inverse, uh, sorry, f hat as my mean and some standard deviation that is w plus k minus one inverse, okay? So, um, yeah. Basically, I'm just saying that my, my posterior is also a normal and that normal has some covariance that depends on the gradient of, of the second derivative of the shape of that classifier that I want to use. And this is just the, the data. So my data is defining the, the, whole, the, whole, the whole deal, right? I'll just compute the, the data term over here and, and I can just plug it in and then just do gradient descent to find it. Uh, yeah, so nice, we have that way. Now, what if we want to do it with respect to some data point, right? Imagine like you want to compute your predictive, uh, predictive posterior, right? Um, now, what happens in here, right? So you have some data for testing, some X star. And what you're trying to do is to compute what are the expected F, F star values given these X star, given your data and given your, your labels. And these should be, uh, since I'm marginalizing with respect of F, right? The expected value of this F star by having these predicted F over here. And then I'm just using all the data again times my probability of f given x, y times d of f. And this expected value over here, as uh, we discussed before, it ends up as the k star uh, transpose k inverse f, right? Because this is just the mean of these predicted values over here, times the p of f, x, y, df, and 
yeah so now this over here is just the expected value of f with respect of this conditioning over here right so i can just simply put it in here so this is the expected value of f with respect to this distribution x y times my differential right the df oh sorry no 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 the df already uh, it's in it's in there so okay forget forget about this and what is this expected value right like this is my my f hat that i had so this is equivalent of k star transpose k inverse and my uh, f hat like the expected value of the f <clears throat> so that would be for for my for my mean and for the variance of these the variance of f star what i will have so I can use the iterated variance uh, theorem to, to obtain this. That tells me like the expected variance of the conditioning uh, plus the variance of the expected conditioning value should be equal to the variance, right? And uh, everything here is conditioned as before, right? Everything is conditioned X star Y, uh, X and Y, but yes, I'm just being lazy. So um, what is each of these terms, right? So the first one, this expected value with respect to the variance and F star F is just, um, this variance over here, we had it before, right? So we know what it, what this is. So this is the expected value of my k star star minus my k star transpose k inverse k star. And they are, uh, they do not depend on, on these data, right? So I can just simply take them out. k star star minus k star t transpose k inverse k star. And now the second term over here, my variance of the expected value of f star given f is what? So is it is the variance of the expected f, right? So this is the mean. So it's the variance of the mean of this f star. And we already have it. So this should be k star k inverse f. And this again just depends on uh, k star k inverse are not uh, a constants with respect to these. So this should be only the variance of f over here, the variance of f. And then because I am just moving these uh, outside, we need to just kind of multiply through the um, rules of, of working with the variance and, and some coefficient there. So what is this uh, variance of f now? If we plug it, plug it back, we will have that this is uh, my k star star minus k star t transpose k star star. Um, plus this thing over here, plus k star, k inverse variance of f, k inverse k star. And now I can factor out this um, k star k inverse, right? And this will be minus k star, k inverse k, uh, sorry, minus k inverse variance of f k inverse k star. So I can uh, do the factorization on both sides. And this is, um, if you remember my, my variance, this can be uh, this w plus k inverse that I had before, right? So. Remember like this variance of f is basically my w plus k inverse, approximately, right, uh, inverse, this, this thing over here. So uh, we can use matrix inversion to solve this. 
And my matrix inversion uh, just tells me, let me write it maybe in here. Some The matrix inversion just tells me like, if I have two matrices and I'm trying to invert them, they relate as follows. And this is the inverse of A minus the inverse of A times uh, A, B inverse plus A inverse, uh, inverse, A inverse, right? So this shape is basically this thing over here and I can use it. To, to to my favor because I can just simply invert it, right? Because if you see here, my K star T, it's, um, sorry, my K, my K inverse here, is just A in here. And then I will have this other one, my variance of F, this variance of F to be uh, my W over here, right? So I can just plug it back and see what I got because I will have as follows. So my variance of F star, it's going to be approximately to K star star minus uh, K star transpose K inverse times K minus one plus W inverse K minus one K star. So if now I apply my matrix inversion over here, then I will end up with this K star star. And this is just my minus K star transpose K plus W inverse inverse K star. Now this is really nice because I have a really uh, small and close form such that my, my predictive function over here X and Y is a normal, right, again, such that my mean is this thing that I found. So it is my K star transpose K inverse F hat. And um, my mean, uh, sorry, my bearings is this thing that I just found over here. So my K star star minus K star transpose K plus W inverse inverse K star. And now you have a way of finding the, the relation between uh, your data and your predictions. And you just need to compute an, a new Gaussian. And that Gaussian just depends on the kernels that you are going to use with respect to your data, the training one and the testing one. This uh, mean of, the, of your uh, testing data, so training data. And this uh, covariance matrix is again between your, your training data and your testing data. And this is the second gradient that you want to use from, from your uh, particular uh, shape. And that's it. It's really, really straightforward. The, the problem here is dealing with these nasty inverse, inverse problems. So you will need to do some kind of approximations. Normally we'd use Cholesky to, to try to to solve it or try to approximate it. But yeah, that is one of the of the limitations of these methods. And uh, again, I just urge you to go and, and check the book. They have some nice uh, explanations and further information on, on how to deal and some tips to implement these, these inversion problems, okay? See you later.